Let me ask you a question. When is the last time you considered your note taking process? And when was the last time someone actually offered direction on how to take notes effectively based on the task or assignment? Note taking is a skill often taken for granted, but refining our practice and systems for note taking can mean the difference between effectively studying for an exam, improving the time it takes to research and write an essay, your ability to make connections for a literature review, and so much more. So in this video, I'm not only gonna show you how to take notes, but also offer systems and approaches to make your notes seamless, searchable, and above all, I will offer you a system which will help you ace your exams, papers, and research assignments. Hello friend, my name is Kaylin. I am a fifth year PhD candidate in history and African American studies at Yale University, currently working and living in London while writing my doctoral dissertation. If you love study content, learning about how to live a balanced lifestyle, and all things sustainable productivity, then I would love if you can hit the subscribe button. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into today's video. First and foremost, let's talk about the process. We need to begin with the understanding that note taking is not one size fits all. The way that I took notes to prepare for multiple choice exams in community college is quite different from how I prepared for written exams in university. These practices also evolved when I became a graduate student. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down note taking into four different categories in order to suit all types of students. First, we have notes for exams with an emphasis on short term retention. Second, notes for university essays. Third, notes for literature reviews. And fourth, notes for research. Before diving directly into the note taking process, we need to begin with a discussion about tools and systems. Let's begin by talking about paper versus digital. In my mind, paper is ideal for retention and is great for lectures, but digital is for the accumulation of long-term knowledge. So while I think that paper notes are ideal for in-class notes and for courses that you're likely not going to refer to later, for anything that you think you may refer to six, eight, 16 months from now, I want you to go ahead and make sure that you're keeping digital copies. Number two annotating articles and books. Now, I'm not really going to be covering that in today's video because I made an entire video called How to Read Like a PhD Student that I am going to be referring to in this video as a reference point. So if you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna go ahead and link it up here as well as in the description so you can check it out after watching this video. But the four primary takeaways from annotating is that you need to accumulate and highlight the argument, the referenced literature or secondary literature, the actual sources and data, and you need to keep this in a digital commonplace, which brings me to point number three. The importance here is searchability. And step one is going to have cloud storage. This can be a Google Drive, this can be iCloud, it can be OneDrive, whatever system works best for you. This should be your storage place that you refer to for everything. The second is a general note-taking application. You can use anything from Notion, a Google Doc, Obsidian, whatever works best for you. But then the third are processing applications. And this is where Atlas TI Web comes in. Atlas TI Web is a qualitative coding software that you can use in order to annotate your documents, take notes, and find connections. I'm gonna be discussing them in further depth later in this video. Now that we have a general understanding and have discussed tools, we're gonna go ahead and move straight on to section one of this video, which is notes for exams. Picture this. You're in a university classroom and the teacher begins their lecture. They have a series of slides and are talking at a mile a minute. You feel inadequately prepared and can hardly keep up. What is important to note and what is not? You're not sure. Yet you look around and every other student seems to be writing or typing away. How do they know what to do? You raise your hand and ask if the slides will be made available after the class and resign to taking notes on whatever appears on the screen. But when the exam rolls around, you realize you have not adequately prepared. In fact, the notes on the slides hardly covered a third of the material noted on the exam. You think to yourself, there must be an easier way. I promise you, we have all been there and there is no need to panic. Many professors place a lot of weight in their lectures to direct the questions on their exams. And as a teaching assistant at Yale, I can tell you from experience that the slides and study guides are not sufficient for helping you grasp the material on your upcoming exams. However, there are some guiding principles to ensure you don't miss a beat. So here are three things you need to focus on. First and foremost, you need to focus on themes. What recurring themes arise within the class? Is there any approach that your lecturer seems to take when considering questions? One quick note is that this might be more applicable to the humanities and social science subjects. Number two, key terms and subjects. These will often be mentioned along with an anecdote or an example. 
note their definition and at least one key detail to help you remember. Number three, equations. Write both the formula and an example which your professor likely outlined in their lecture. One quick note, if at any point you feel like you missed details in a lecture, please reach out to your teaching assistant or professor for a meeting. They are there to help, and if I learned anything while teaching myself, it is that your instructors actually do want to see you succeed and are most likely open to spending time with you one-on-one -on -one to ensure that you do not fall behind. So many students are worried that their professors or teaching assistants have too much going on to meet with them, but I will tell you from personal experience that I want to see my students succeed, and I would much rather that they had come and talk to me in advance so that way I can make sure that I help them prepare for the exam. So lean on the resources within your institution, reach out to your teaching assistant or your professor and get the assistance that you need. Number four, assignments and reading notes. For asynchronous assignments, your ability to think critically and solve problems is what is being tested. Here are two approaches to smash your assignments out of the park while also creating strong study guides for later. Number one is problem solving. Often found in courses which consist of equations and formulas such as in STEM subjects, or for the quantitative side of the social sciences, what is important here is practice. You are likely assigned a series of problem sets and your job is to identify an answer. This assignment is not just about turning out the right answers, however. Instead, your goal will be to learn the process from which you actually identify a solution. For your notes, I recommend writing out one to four example problem sets from your class or textbook as a guide. Much of the theory behind an equation or formula can be confusing. So instead of simply writing the formula in your exam notes, be sure to include a few examples and the steps it took to get there. Number two, critical thinking. These are often related to written assignments and reading responses, most often found in humanities, arts, and social science programs. The goal here is to first identify the core message, theme, or argument, and secondly, to analyze. Now here is how you want to take notes while reading in order to ace your assignment. Begin noting arguments made by the author or the general sentiment or message implied. Secondly, analyze the evidence used. You'll begin by noting examples used in the text and how the author analyzed them. You're gonna to wanna to take short bullet points with your own thoughts and reactions. Do you agree? Disagree? Why? Write it down. One quick note, do not take notes on every little piece of text. Focus on the argument or sentiment and two to three key examples which you can analyze and discuss. This is important beyond your assignment. If you are cramming for an exam, there is no way you are going to remember every single quote in detail. So take note of two things to simplify not only your process and decrease the time spent studying, but also to ensure you actually have the information which can easily help you memorize for the exam. Here's a quick example. In undergrad, I had a closed book exam in identification section. This is pretty common in history exams. I was asked to identify Crispus Attucks, known as the first individual to be fatally wounded during the Boston Massacre, which spurred patriotic sentiment against the British during the American Revolution. Crispus was Wampanoag and African, and what is often noted about him was his race. However, because of my notes and identifying specific anecdotes, I remember that he was born in Farmingham, outside of Boston, and was able to discuss not only Crispus Attucks' role in the American Revolution as an Afro-Indigenous man, which, by the way, if you want to learn more about Afro-Indigenous history, please check out Kyle Mays' book. I'm going to go leave a link down below. This is not an affiliate link. He's just a mentor of mine, and I really think that we should all be reading this book. But anyhow, back to the point. In my essays, I wanted to identify how Boston served as a diverse hub whereby merchants and fishermen from across Massachusetts came to be involved in revolutionary fervor. The lesson here is to note random examples and mentions which will help trigger memories that are unique to you. Everyone is going to discuss the main crux of the reading and the most obvious facts about the term or subject. What you can do to take your notes and therefore level up on your exams is to actually identify facts which are interesting to you, which you can elaborate on in a unique way. Summary. When taking notes in preparation for an exam, pay close attention to the main ideas, themes, equations, and examples. And take note of them in short bullet points, which can be easily converted into study materials for memorization, such as flashcards. Now it's time to go ahead and move on to section number two, which is notes for essays and written exams. Unlike the previous section, which was primarily focused on lectures and the ability to reiterate and process the information, 
from the course back to your instructors, written essays and exams require a slightly different kind of finesse. It's important to note that my approach with this section is based on written assignments, which have a set reading or source list. Some written assignments may also include mention of themes or terms from within the lecture material. So for this, please refer back to section one. However, with the set reading list, you're going to take note of three things. First and foremost, theme within the text. Secondly, terms and subjects. And third, sources and evidence. Similar to section one where I discussed assignments, we are going to build on that model to focus on critical engagement. However, instead of focusing on memorization, we are taking notes for the purpose of writing a paper and being able to elaborate on our thoughts. Therefore, these three areas may be familiar, but we are going to approach them in a slightly different way. Let's begin with arguments and themes. Begin your notes with a clear outline of the reading's core arguments and themes. Let's say you're taking a module on Jane Austen and are tasked with reading Pride and Prejudice alongside literary studies of the book. While the themes which are highlighted often by literary scholars may focus on marriage, female friendship, or the like, also take note of what's not mentioned. Consider what is missing. Secondly, note what they argue. All you're going to need is one to three bullet points. These are going to be important as you develop your argument in support or in disagreement with field experts. Secondly, terms and subjects. Unlike when you were preparing for exams, preparing for writing an essay will require you go a bit deeper to identify terms and subjects, the author's chosen definitions and examples for their use throughout the numerous articles or books you may be required to read. Again, you're gonna wanna add bullet points for any interesting tidbits of information, which may inform a unique thesis or argument, but now you're also going to save supporting quotes and details. Third, sources and evidence. Much of academic study relies on the unique use case and analysis of evidence or data. Whether you are a scientist looking at the cells of a tomato or a social scientist studying the prevalence of trans-border migration or even a historian like me studying references to matrilineal descent in the early modern English Atlantic, we all begin with a hypothesis which is either supported or disproven by the evidence. When analyzing the assigned reading, play close attention to the use of evidence and take note of the author's stance, as well as your own. Summary. When taking notes for essays, you will want to include quotes and examples which you can refer to in your analysis. However, do not just write what the author says. Instead, also incorporate bullet points into your notes with your own viewpoint, so you don't lose sight of your unique read on the text and therefore your unique voice when it comes time to write. For tips on how to write your essays, I recommend checking out these three videos. Now it's time for section number three, notes for literature reviews. If you are or hope to become a graduate student, then you will likely become very familiar with what is known as a literature review. These go beyond the readings assigned by an instructor and often require that you pose your own hypothesis and perform an analysis on what is said by professionals in the field. This is going to require a new format for note taking. The literature review will include these four core elements, the literature search, reading and highlighting, note-taking, and writing. Now this video is primarily focused on the note-taking process. However, I want to share a tool which may aid in step one of your literature review process, and that is Atlas TI Web's latest paper search feature. Atlas TI Web is a virtual qualitative research assistant which leverages AI and methods for manual coding in order to improve your overall workflow, identify patterns, and help you better understand your materials. First, let's go over the paper search feature. One of the most challenging steps when beginning work on a literature review is actually identifying articles and books which are relevant to your subject. However, with the help of literature search engines such as Atlas TI Web, we can access millions of sources, including 200 plus million articles sourced by Atlas TI Web using Semantic Scholar. But now let's move on to the most important feature for the purpose of this video, which is note taking and tagging. One of the most important features of a well-oiled organizational system is the ability to access and search literature across time and space. This is why I recommend having a dedicated note taking system for tracking your readings, because you may find in three years time, you would like to check that one obscure article you read two years ago. Well, this is where Atlas TI Web is quite handy. Not only can you import a variety of sources, including transcriptions, articles, audio files, and videos, but their AI system will also help you identify recurring themes, 
phrases and subjects within your literature. You can also check codes manually to ensure you're collecting data which is most relevant to you. However, if you're feeling a little bit lost when summarizing an article, you can also use Atlas TI Web's conversational AI to gain further clarity. I began using Atlas TI Web a little over a year ago when I began working on my dissertation, and I've recommended it in so many videos and to so many researchers because of its ease of use, as well as their ever expanding list of useful features. To try out Atlas TI Web for yourself, be sure to use code ACADEMIC20 and click the link in my bio below. To summarize, the notes that you take for a literature review should identify not just the arguments of various writers and the evidence used, but also make connections across various studies. Your task is essentially to use your notes and visualization tools, such as the data collection tables within Atlas TI Web, to identify trends and then use those notes to inform your essay. Now let's move on to section number four, notes for research and specifically for theses and dissertations. Now, admittedly, this is the most complicated section because the notes that you take for your research are going to be driven by field specific objectives and will also be greatly driven by your own preferences. For example, I use Notion to track my secondary literature notes and primary source notes, but I use Atlas TI Web in order to code my legal records when identifying trends across various legislative bodies and courts. However, there are two universal systems that we can establish in order to streamline our process, and that is a literature database and a primary database, where we capture things such as lab notes from our individual studies or surveys, notes from the archival records or frontline interviews. The primary database will be driven by your field and what is recommended for how you conduct your studies. But if you are a humanities scholar or historian, you can learn more about my archival note taking process by watching this video here. As for your literature database, you are going to follow a similar procedure as you did when conducting your literature review. However, there are two additional recommendations. First is to track your citations. You can use a reference management software such as Paperpile, Zotero, or Mendeley, or you can manually track your citations in a database, such as the one that I've created on Notion. The second is to track subfields through tags. You can do this by coding your documents in Atlas TI Web, but you can also use this when saving documents to the cloud. For all the documents used for my dissertation, I adopted a filing system for the title to help me keep my notes organized and searchable regardless of if I later uploaded them to Atlas or another application. And this system goes as follows. Project, subfield, title, author. Now here is an example. Dissertation, early modern England, labors of innocence, picciato. This is something I wish that somebody told me when I was in college, and so I am telling you now to save you hopefully a whole lot of time and frustration. <laughs> in conclusion, note-taking is a process which is so dependent on personal preference and should be catered to how it is that you learn best. However, I hope that by refining the process, you are better able to improve upon your own systems in order to be a more efficient and confident student. If you are ready to level up and take your note taking and literature review practice to the next level, be sure to check out Atlas TI Web and use code ACADEMIC20 for 20% off of your subscription. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to share it with a friend and let me know what you would like to see next on my Like a PhD student series. Thank you friends and I'll see you next time.